Hey guys, what's up? Um, I haven't made a video in a while, so I thought this would, was a good thing to make a video about. I do have a couple uh, uh, other things that I plan to make, but um, right now I'm doing this. A anyways, this is a uh, Atari 7800 that um, I'm doing the S video mod for a customer. And while I was Finishing this up, um, I actually had something very odd happen, and had I searched the, 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 the internet, I would have found out that it's actually a pretty common problem with the 7800. Um, having t so originally, let me just sh show you what happens. So. When you have a 7800 game plugged in, here's what I get. Without T9 connected, um, the picture looks good. I reset it. There we go. Everything's good. You get the point. Um, now, it's actually... Uh, unfortunately hard to see on camera but when I reconnect TN9 notice the uh, flickering or on the TV uh, these are actually vertical bars that are scrolling up uh, and unfortunately there's no way t t to get rid of that the only way to get rid of it is to not have TIA 9 TIA pin 9 connected to the mod board and obviously cartridge needs to be adjusted but um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use um, and I, I, I'm going to actually do this in all future installations of uh, 7800 mod uh, S video boards I'm going to take the ch channel switch which I have desoldered at the moment because I was trying to find the traces that lead to it to make sure I got them all disconnected I'm going to take the ch channel switch and make this a switch where uh, you disconnect TN9, and uh, when you put a 2600 game in, and it goes into 2600 mode, uh, you're gonna want to switch this uh, switch back and reconnect TN9 to uh, allow color on 2600 games. So let me show you what I'm gonna do. So, th 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 this is where the channel switch is, and I'm actually going to want some more light. And, uh, in order to use this switch, as well as where it's mounted, um, as a TIA 9 on-off switch, we have to disconnect the traces from that. We don't want things interfering with, uh color and we also don't want misc voltage going into the uh, Stella or Tia um, so you're gonna want to use a curved blade exacto knife or a uh, fiberglass brush curved blade exacto knife will be a lot easier to find but um, yeah there is a trace here that uh, runs to ground as we can see or maybe you can't I can't tell and that looks a little bit better uh, yeah there is a trace that runs from here to ground I'm not going to disconnect that because um, well it'd be a hassle at number one number two um, I'm going to make sure to wire uh, TN9 to um, the right part of the switch, but there is a trace here that we have to cut. So, 
Let's go ahead and cut that. Something I've noticed online and uh, on on internet forums and stuff like that is people think that when you cut a trace, you 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 cut diagonally, but that's not true. You want to cut. Um, you, you want to dig under here with your exacto knife or whatever you're using and actually sort of sand back or uh, lift up lift backwards the trace that's going to what you want to disconnect um, the point is to disconnect the copper that is going from that trace to wherever and uh, by just cutting it diagonally you're not going to d do that necessarily y you want to dig under and lift up that's how you cut a trace anyways um, now there is a trace on the bottom uh, let's see there's a trace right here in the m middle part of the switch that we want to get rid of. Um, so let's go ahead and uh, lift that trace as well. And you know what? Um, now that I think about it, I do need to cut that ground trace, or uh, that will, or what will happen is, uh, that will ground out this pin, and, uh, you know, that wouldn't be a good thing, so, uh, yeah, let's c cut this trace here. There we go. Now what we're going to do is we're going to wire, let's zoom out a bit, we're going to wire TIA 9 to uh, the, the channel switch. And we're also going to take our TIA 9 wire, which I'm not actually sure where that's, yeah, yeah we're going to take our TIA 9 input and also we'll wire that to the switch. Alright, I have my spare wire here. There we go. Now what I'm going to do uh, is actually stick the wires through the same holes where the uh, switch is mounted and then stick the switch down in through here. You're going to want to just flip the board upside down and solder to the switch. Um, I, however, am going to uh, do it this way because one, I want to, and two, I already have the switch out of here, so why not, right? All right, so that was probably a lot harder than it had to be, but that's what I chose. Now I'm just going to solder this switch back in. There we go. Okay. That's it. those wires are secure yeah they are We're all good uh, so, 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 something else um, that I'll mention since I'm talking about the 7800 is uh, if you have a pokey game um, that means there's a pokey chip in the game. Um, not 
very many games use the pokey chip, but some do. And if you have one of those, having um, regular audio c connected will actually drown out uh, the sound of the pokey game. Uh, some people online have suggested using a 47k resistor in between regular audio and uh, audio input. Um, I actually found that didn't that made regular sound too low. Um, so I'm gonna try in between that. Um, use, I think I have some 26.5k resistors that I'll go ahead and try, but that's just something I thought I would mention since I'm talking about the 7800. So, uh, let's go ahead and test, uh, a 2600 game first, and let's zoom out. So what's going to happen is uh, when you're playing a uh, 7800 game, you're going to want this switch there, and if you're playing a 2600 game, you're going to want the switch here. Uh, otherwise, the uh, 2600 game will be in bl black and white. So there we go. There is the 2600 game with TIA9 disconnected. As y y you can see, or maybe you can't see, Let's see if it shows better on uh, my CRT. As y y you can see, it's only in uh, black and white. If I uh, sw turn on the switch, there we go. TIA9 is now c connected. So you do get color. Again, flick the switch off, no c color, flick the switch on, there's c color. So I had to turn all the lights off in my workshop to really get a good shot of what the problem is. You can see it r really well uh, when you uh, first start up the system and it shows the Atari logo. Um, I'll show you how it looks without and uh, with. So see the vertical lines scrolling there? Um, I'm not sure if you can. They are still there, although the color does help get rid of them a bit. I'm not sure if you can see them or not, but uh, they're pretty prominent on uh, the rest of the screen. I might be able to show you a bit better on my uh, PVM. And I'm not really sure if that helps. But uh, let's go ahead and um, switch back over. So I apologize, this tr tripod sucks. Um, yeah, that's how it looks. Now, if I turn off the TIA 9 connection, no v v vertical bars. Again, I'm not sure if you can really tell or not, but. Uh, there is a pretty big difference. Anyways, um, that's about it for this v v v v video. Um, I guess I could show you wiring up a resistor from the main audio to uh, audio in, but I mean, all that is is just soldering in a resistor. So, so um, yeah, that's about it, guys. Uh, thanks, thanks, thanks for watching.